Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am your host for the show, Dr. Lino Martinez. Oh yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to A Little Less Fear Podcast. Today, I'd like to introduce Megan Warren. She's a transformational health and life coach who empowers individuals to live their most healthy and fulfilled lives through a mind-body approach that maximizes energy production and productivity while minimizing stress and burnout. Megan utilizes an integrative platform that addresses the root cause of body imbalances and mind body and mind emotional blocks that can perpetuate patterns and behaviors which limit optimal wellness and sustainable lifestyle habits. Megan is a firm believer that one size does not fit all when it comes to health. We all come in different shapes and sizes, that's for sure, and from unique backgrounds and a true holistic approach takes everything into consideration into consideration. Using tools like breath work, Megan's holistic protocols work to support nervous system regulation and allow the body and mind to harmonize. Health has never been more important than it is today, and Megan is a true ally for her clients and their desire to optimize their health and lives. Welcome to A Little Less Fear podcast, Megan. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. A pleasure. So I'm curious about your journey. What brought you to where you are at today and doing your incredible work? Yeah, so my journey started, if we if we really go all the way back, my journey started when I was a child. I was sick a lot, um, just always on antibiotics and knowing what I know now and what antibiotics do to the body and your gut microbiome. Yeah, so, you know, that's really where it starts, right? Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, everything childhood. starts in the gut. Yeah. And also knowing now what I know about stress patterns and my relationship with food back then, I was also, I just, I loved sugar. I loved to eat. I would numb out, you know, suppressing my emotions and just turn to food as a child, not knowing anything about that then. Um, So that's really where it started. And then hormonally, when I was a teenager, my hormones were a wreck. I did what most females do when they go to their gynecologist at the age of 13, 14, 15, get on the birth control pill, which is a band-aid approach to really getting to the root of hormone dysfunction. Exactly. And from there, just, I got off the pill, um, in my twenties, I was, I was feeling, um, I just wasn't feeling like myself. I started to have, again, a bad relationship with food, getting on getting on some diets, like to the extreme where I was working out a couple of times a day, really obsessed with what society teaches us, you know, you need to look good and all of this stuff and um, cultivating a bad relationship with food then and learning that I had a thyroid disorder. And so I decided to get off the pill and that's when things just, my hormones were a wreck. I didn't have a cycle for a full year and I was not pregnant. And I went to the doctor and the doctor told me I had lazy ovaries, which no female ever wants to hear that. (laughs) Do you want to have kids in your future? And so that led me on a journey, on a holistic journey. I wanted to find a natural approach. I wanted to use food as medicine. I wanted to have a whole healthy relationship with food. And so really that's where it started for me um, as far as like, treating my body different, using food as medicine in my early 20s. Megan, I find that actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but as you're saying this, I I find it really intuitive actually for somebody in their 20s to figure out that it was their diet. How did you figure that out? You just said, well, you know what, maybe it's my food. How did you figure that out? Well, I think it was, I think it was really the opposite of, you know, I mean, going to the extreme of I'm going to change X, Y, and Z in my diet led to my thyroid issue, which I didn't know that at the time, but when we are malnourished and we're not fueling our body and getting the proper minerals and nutrients our body needs, Mm -hmm. the first thing that starts to suffer is our metabolism, which is connected to our thyroid, which then messes up your hormones. And so my mom was a very big influencer at the time for me because she was a nurse and really was drawn to being healthy. And so I thought, you know, why not listen to mom? 
<laughs> Why not listen to mom in my 20s? Right. And start to use, you know, start to use what she's saying, food, to make me feel better. And she had a lot of success um, on her journey with just feeling better. And she had a lot of hormonal issues, which is very interesting with what I know now, how in vitro you pass on things to your children. Wow. And so she had a lot of gut issues, hormonal issues that was probably passed down to me, even trauma. Yes. can be carried over into the body. And so knowing what I know now, it's, you know, one thing has led me to the other. So I started with mainly the body, you know, exercise and food. And now really like looking at that's one small part. That's one small part of really healing the body. There's so many other parts that go into healing and for a lot of people, that's where they do start. You know, you have the motivation to eat better. You have the motivation to exercise. And really what I think that is, is a spiritual wake up call. I think that's, absolutely. I think that's you trying to get more spiritually aligned and become an alignment and food and movement can yeah. play a big role in coming into that alignment. And so that's, that's where I started. Wow. That's incredible. It's still really incredible and you're really lucky that you figured this out in your 20s. I mean, some people take some a lifetime before they figure that out. How mm -hmm. soon, Megan, when you, once you changed your diet and started exercising and, and I'm curious to know what you changed your diet to, but before we go there, how mm -hmm. soon, once you made that change, did you start seeing a difference in your hormone, your energy and uh, all, all your other levels? Yeah. Um, so at first, when I started to change my diet, it was, like I said, the extreme where I cut out a lot of carbohydrates and sugar, and that was not good for me. What I thought and what a lot of, you know, what people tell you is like, eliminate the sugar, eliminate the carbohydrates on a female cycle, that's not very helpful. And so it took me some time to really navigate and understand. And I went and, I went and saw a functional medicine doctor and got on hormone therapy um, to jumpstart my period. And that worked, but again, it wasn't really addressing the root issue. Right. So it took time. It took years for me to really start to feel different and notice that, you know, a walk is more beneficial than me kicking my ass on a treadmill for 40 minutes because yes. I was so depleted and I was layering stress on top of stress not eating the right foods and not getting the right nourishment, more stress, working myself out too much, more stress. And that's and just so, increasing your stress hormone levels as well. Bingo, which yeah. has a cascade effect on your other hormones in your gut microbiome. And not to mention your mental health and how you start to feel about your body when you think you're doing everything right and you're not seeing the external results. Right, right, right. And so it's all a domino effect. And that's when I got really curious and I actually went through. Um, so to answer your question, I would say it probably took me a good five years to wow. really start to feel good in my body. And that's when I started, you know, doing meditation and more yoga, got certified to be a yoga teacher, fell really in love with like learning how to slow down the exercise and not do super intense exercises. Right. And just when all that started to fall into place, I ended up going through a divorce. Oh, wow. And that's really what then started my journey on <clears throat> the self-care journey and the self-love and really looking at my beliefs and my mindset, mm -hmm. which was a game changer for me. You know, it's interesting as you're saying this, I'm imagining what it what would have happened had you not changed your diet and your exercise routine and gone through the divorce it would have been like triple quadruple wham so oh, it's kind of yeah. like you your soul put you into an alignment to be able to handle the divorce at a more healthier bo mind body state of mind absolutely oh my gosh you're 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 totally right i i had the awareness and the spiritual guidance which grew during my divorce, you know, it, it really created so much resilience in me and it's really where my faith grew. And I knew that like, I am so supported. I don't really know what's supporting me right now, but it's 
it has to be God. And I just feel so supported throughout this. Yeah. And if I didn't have my vessel, my body in better health, right. I could have really went down. A, I could have went down a dark hole, I believe. And I didn't, I didn't. Wow. That's incredible to really, to look back and see the setup and how everything falls into place at it in its own divine time for, for, for the greater good. Yeah. Yeah. So Megan, what, um, what, what foods helped you? I mean, what, I, I understand you cut carbs and sugars and stuff, but what did you add? What did you implement and what started to uplift you within those five years? Yeah. What started so, to improve your gut microbiome? That's a great question. Um, really coming back to root vegetables. So your squashes, like that. beets, carrots, um, coming back to what nature is intended for us to eat. So like grass fed, the quality of our meat is very, very important. Wild caught fish, grass fed beef, pasture raised eggs. That's what our bodies are meant to be taking in and the nutrients that we get. I mean, think about it back in the day when we didn't have all these big companies producing our food. How do we get our food? Right. We were hunters you know? and gatherers. Bingo. Fresh. So, bingo. So it really does come back to that. Having real grass-fed butter, yeah. having healthy, you know, coconut oil, cooking with oils are very, very, very important for hormone health and brain health. And so coming back to the basics is, is the medicine. It's not, it's not reducing your caloric intake and eliminating all these major food groups. It's really, really investing in high quality food that nature makes. I agree with you 100%. What about fasting? What do you think about that? Okay. So I have, I have a, I think it's great. For Megan, men. I'm not going to lie. I tried it. I tried the. I tried it. And while it helped me with like my bowels and stuff, I started to lose too much weight. I'm already like a small dude, you know? And I was like, hang on, what am I missing here? So yeah. I, I kind of went through the same stuff you, you did as well. And, uh, fasting, it was not the answer for me, but this still seems to be a fad. And a lot of people are still doing it. And I even see it on social media. Fasting is the way to go. And I'm like, hold on a minute. I don't think it's for everyone. That's right. I, I agree with that. Um, I think for men, because your hormone cycle every 24 hours, females, oh our hormone cycle every 28 days. Whoa. Okay. We, wow. So very, very different. There are times during our cycle where we don't feel 100% motivated, like right when we're supposed to start our period a few days sure. before, you can lose that, like. And a lot of women will go, what's wrong with me? Why, you know, well, we're not built to operate like men because our hormones are different. And that's just science behind it, you know? So for me, I think, you know, in the research that I've studied too, is like intermittent fasting is great for men for that reason. But for females, you can do it in certain parts of your cycle where you're not, you know, right when you're on your, when you're bleeding, not good to intermittent fast. When you're right about to start, not good to intermittent fast, but you can do it at certain phases of your cycle that could be helpful. However, it puts the liver in a lot of stress when you are intermittent fasting. And so for me, you know, and what I've seen be very helpful with a female that has a cycle is having breakfast, you know, 30 minutes to an hour upon waking up just to support that liver. Because a lot of what happens with our bodies is we're under so much stress, our liver needs those the sugars to be able to function properly or it's going to be stressed out and we have to have our detox pathways open so that we can feel feel our best and our body is functioning optimally megan what happens if a woman fasts during her cycle what you're saying that it's not good to do it while they're bleeding why what, what happens what, what well i mean nothing happen? nothing will happen other than more you're fatigue gonna, you're, you're putting the body in more stress Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at it, like our bodies are meant to, I mean, think about if you, if you go back to the hunters and gatherers, like they were under stress when they didn't have food. Right. But they didn't have all the other stressors that we deal with today. Exactly. So if true. you know what I mean, those were their only stresses. Exactly. So we have a lot of micro stressors, emails that we get from work. Our boss is pissing us off. Our husbands or wives or, you know, children and just 
um, Instagram totally being, you know, or your social media pings, like all of that stuff. Right. Every time the body gets that signal, we think that we're being chased by a tiger. Right. <laughs> and we're not being chased by a tiger, but our but our nervous systems become dysregulated because of that. And so what it can do, it just causes more dysregulation. When instead, if you're eating and fueling the body, the body gets the signal like, hey, you're safe. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You're not being chased. You're getting enough nutrients. You don't have to store fat because we're we might not eat in three weeks. You're going to be able to have food that day. Mm -hmm. So we're, it's just very different. And our bodies don't understand the difference from today versus hundred years ago. That's, that's so true. And it's excellent to point out. Thank you. you know, as you're saying this, I'm also, I'm thinking about how, uh, and earlier today, when I read your bio, I was reading about how using tools like breath work or one size does not fit all. And as you're saying all this, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, slow down and mm -hmm. slow down even with eating because like i'm not trying to call out my roommate he's not here right now but <laughs> but he eats so fast it's like he'll you'll he's he like inhales it and i'm like hey i'm really taking two bites and you're already done and so bad you know i don't want I'm not trying to change people's ways but in my mind i'm thinking that that can't possibly be good for your body stress levels like you should be able to slow down kind of like breath work even with your food Take some deep breaths, enjoy what you're eating, and allow your body body to slowly metabolize everything and break everything down. I can't I can't even imagine all the gastric juices trying to break everything down within 30 seconds of swallowing a burger. Yeah. Do yeah. you find yeah. that you do that in your business also, having people slow down the way they eat or even change the way that they eat? Absolutely. That's something I go over with, with every single person because you start to digestion starts in the mouth. How you're breaking down your food. And a lot of times people are not chewing enough. And a lot of, most people, they don't have sufficient amounts of digestive enzymes in their gut. And so you have to start eating slowly so that you can start to produce those digestive enzymes in the gut. And also eliminating like liquids while you're eating because it dilutes the hydrochloric acid in the gut is also what? like- I didn't really, know that. <laughs> yeah, so like- Looking water. Drink, Drink water like 20 minutes before you eat. You'll be fine if you don't have, you know, if you drink while, yeah. you, while you eat. Um, but yeah, it dilutes it. And so just test it out. Just test it out. And I chew will. your food well and also being in more of a mindful state of, you know, I don't need to rush this. I can enjoy the food. Be Bringing presence to your food is really important. Bringing gratitude to the food that you get so easily that we get so easily can be really helpful and just change your relationship with food too. And that gives it a really holistic spiritual experience to your meals as well. A sacred experience. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we just take things for granted because food's always available to us. Yeah. And let easy. alone fast food. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Megan, tell us about your business. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much, you know, I work with people. I work with males and females. Primarily females. Um, I guess, ages? Um, not really, to be honest. I don't really, you know, I used to be a middle school teacher, which is so funny because um, if I ever start working with teens, I could see why. Because I have a heart for just those teenage, those teenage years. But currently, my the demographics usually that I attract are anywhere from like mid twenties to mid forties okay. around that. Yeah, both male and female, high achieving people, usually the people who are like, I'm doing everything right. What's wrong with me? I'm burnt out. I'm running on fumes. And I'm like, because you're not doing everything right. Yeah. You think you're doing everything right. But that's where I come in and I get to help you how to, you know, reprogram these stress patterns, how to really nourish your body, how to change the way that you're, um, I'm smiling because I'm thinking about a couple of people that are on the fence, whether or not to work with me, they're very high performers very high performers. However, they are not getting their labs done, the labs that I sent to them. And they just, they're pretty much comes down to you're not making it a priority. Right. Right. So really like in my mind, I'm like, okay, you are such a high performer making your business a priority. Mm -hmm. How long have you been neglecting your health? And if you don't have your health, how successful is your business going to be one day? So and I've told him that. 
Um, I'm going to. I haven't yet, yeah. but it's, <laughs> I think it's, that would help me if I if I was if I was talking to a nutritional holistic coach and they they mentioned something like that. I think that would ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah. So I work with people between the ages of 25 to 45, coming back to your question, and really the people who, like I said, they, they're they really wanting to take a holistic approach, a true holistic approach, looking, not being afraid to look at the mind and the body, and they work together. The mind and the body work together. A lot of the thoughts that we're thinking are limiting us. And what that does is it creates emotions in the body. A lot of times it's the emotions that we don't want to feel. And it's really looking at like, how can we stop, slow down, just like you were saying, let yourself fully embrace those emotions and let them move through so that we can be more clear minded, reprogram our thoughts and beliefs, and also have, you know, a better idea of what's the next aligned action step for me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's just, you know, people just focus on the action stuff, but they're not doing the inner work. Yeah. And so, oh, yeah, for sure. yeah, so my journey has kind of brought me to this true holistic approach of looking at the whole person, looking at what they're doing, you know, with their lifestyle, how they're eating, looking at what is the root of the stress? Where is it coming from? What are your patterns? How can we reprogram those? And also look at your breathing and 85% of why people have anxiety is due to improper breathing. Mm -hmm. So really looking at how can we do more functional breathing throughout our day? Because when you are, when your body gets the signal that it's safe and it can be calm, you're going to have a clearer mind versus mm -hmm. if it feels stressed and tense, the it's mind is tight going all around. Everything's going to be tight. Everything's going to be tight, and the mind is also going to think more fear-based thoughts because the body senses it's in danger. Because even the mind is tight at that point. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. So it's a true holistic approach, and I work with people anywhere from you know six months to a year. Some people three months. They just you know we can get things done really fast, but primarily six months is the where I've seen the best results is working with people. Could you tell us a story off the top of your head of a of an incredible success story, somebody that you helped that they're doing excellent now? Yeah. So one person comes to mind. Um, she originally was working with another coach at the start of this year. We're about to be in 2023. So we'll, we will be in 2023 when this comes out. So yes. 2022 is when she started in January. She signed up to work with a coach all about helping her hormone health. And so this coach, I actually know, I love her, I adore her, she's amazing. And this client learned a lot from her program. Mm -hmm. She learned how to fuel her body, she learned how to exercise, you know, a lot of the other things, stress, you know, working on meditation. She came to me in May, so she worked with her for three months, she came to me in May and she said, I, I knew I had to work with you because I knew I wasn't facing the internal stuff. Okay. She grew up with um, a mother that suffered from mental health illness. And at a very young age, she was forced to grow up and take care of her mom. And she had been avoiding that for a lot of her life. And she's now in her 30s. So she came to me. And at this time, also, it's very important to mention that she was still having a lot of hormonal issues, horrible periods, everything with changing her diet, everything like that. And so um, she worked with me for six months. We, within the first two months, we started to reprogram her beliefs. She released so much emotion on our calls, wow. so much emotion. It was so beautiful to witness. And she felt so free after every single call. That's and that's the beauty. Yeah, I, that's why I love, I love my work so much. I feel like I'm really like, tune into spirit when it happens, but just to see like the before and after when someone's really in their thoughts and their beliefs and they like feel the freedom and they're not, they're not stuck in this limitation anymore, but to see the emotion move through. And after two months, her periods were beautiful, no pain. They were the best they'd ever been. And yeah, after that, we then started to look at, okay, what are you eating? 
I took, I took that approach last. We actually worked on more of the mind, the beliefs, releasing the emotions for first for her, because that was what was causing a lot of her issues was that stress impact. So a lot of your work is definitely going to be its utmost best work when the client is willing to do the work themselves. Yes. And you have to be ready for that, yeah. right? I mean, oh, yeah. it feels a little scary, but you know, you know, when you're ready to like go there. Absolutely. How rewarding that is. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome, Megan. Megan, I have a question. As you're talking about this, the word intuitive came to my head and I was wondering what you have to say about intuitive exercising and intuitive eating once somebody is on the right track. Yeah, um, it's interesting because I've always been a fan of like intuitive eating. Yeah. However, the more that, the more experience I get and personally also, Sometimes when, when we intuitively eat, we don't eat enough. And that can be because our metabolism is sluggish. Okay. And so I think that there are steps you can start to take, meaning like starting, you know, if you start to have, this can be a quick tip for everyone who's listening, mm -hmm. that within 30 minutes to an hour of waking up, eating breakfast, having your coffee after breakfast if you do that, that's going to start to jumpstart your metabolism and you'll start to feel more energy, better energy if you do that. And then you'll, you know, give that, give that a month of doing that and then tune into your intuitive eating. Because a lot of times, like for me personally, there was a time when I just wasn't hungry in the morning. I would fast until, you know, 11 o'clock my metabolism was sluggish. That wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't healthy for me. So I had to really start to change my approach in the morning. And then my appetite came back. And that's how I know like appetite is one marker of a strong metabolism. Oh yeah. Oh, that's and right. so, yeah. Does that answer your question? It answers my question, but I think that maybe I, my, my thought about intuitive eating was Maybe I don't know what intuitive eating is, <laughs> but yeah. I, I guess I thought it was what I thought it was for me was tuning into what my body needs. And mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of where I've been lately. And I'm not 100% there yet where I'm not, I guess I don't know enough about certain fruits and vegetables and their healing properties in order for me to intuitively know and feel into what my body needs that day. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think that's really what I meant. Uh, that's what I meant about intuitive eating. Is that a thing? Is that a thing or am I making this up? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. I think, I think that you can be intuitive with really, if you're mindful about asking the question of what does my body need today and listening to that I like guidance. That, I like that. Yeah. I think you can do that. Absolutely. Now, if it's like, am I hungry or not? And you have a sluggish metabolism, that might not be so intuitive. It might just be like, let's, let's first jumpstart the metabolism so that your appetite's good. And you can also ask, you know, I mean, this is why pregnant people, some pregnant people have different cravings because they're, they need those minerals and nutrients. That's true. That's true. Right. And yeah. so, yeah, if you are very mindful and you can slow down and ask yourself, what does my body need today? You might say, I, I'm craving some vegetables or I'm craving some really good juicy steak. Like I need yeah. some more of that you know, the iron and the amino acids that I get from a grass-fed steak, then yes, have that. Absolutely. Megan, what if you get clients that want to stay vegan or vegetarian? I mean, are there, oh man, I tried to go vegan. I could <laughs> I couldn't. Well, so my, my thought about that is you get so many nutrients, like amino acids from our animal meat mm -hmm. and the organs like one of the supplements I recommend is, is, you know, liver. beef desiccated beef liver is very healthy for you. You get a lot of nutrients from organ meat. And so I, I truly believe we have, and this is just my belief. I'm not, you know, there's different people who have different beliefs, but I believe that, you know, we are meant to eat animals. We are meant to eat animals. And it's not, I just, I think that, yeah, I, I think that our bodies, our bodies need it and they function better, especially our detox pathways. They function better when we have those amino acids. And I get a lot of people who are 
um, vegan or vegetarian or only eat seafood and they have hormonal issues because they need support, they need those amino acids. Mm -hmm. I read a book, um, probably a good 10 years ago called eat right for your blood type. Have you heard of that? I have. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm an a positive and apparently a positive flourish on mostly vegetables and fish. And so I, what I do find that to be true in some, in some instances, cause when I have too much meat, but I think this is true for everyone, not just a blood type, but if I have too much meat, I will get constipated and things do slow down and I do feel a little heavier and stuff. So I do try to limit the meat maybe a couple times a week, but what do you, what do you think about, what do you think about that eating right for your blood type? I think there's, I think there can be benefits, pros and cons about every type of diet. I will always go back to, um, eating what nature like you know if mm. if you are having a variety of fruits and vegetables and meats you know different proteins yeah. and fats i think that's the best yeah. that's just my personal um take on that sure. but i think that there are some definite benefits for eating right for your blood type yeah yeah i agree with you on that and, and i find it interesting too because my my father's no blood type and he can eat so much more meat than I can. And I, have, I guess from what I remember with the book, it really depends on where, when that blood type evolved and what was around at that time for them to hunt. So mm -hmm. it, to me, that part makes sense. But I do, I do feel, and I'm sorry, vegans and vegetarians, but I do feel that some meat is definitely important, especially for a gut microbiome. I mean, we kind of need a balance of everything and that's why it's available to us yes. on the planet for survival. I agree. I agree with that. I'm O positive, by the way, too. So. Oh, you're O positive? <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's see if I remember correct. O positives um, strive on running. Are you a runner? Mm -mm. You're not a runner? Never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, <laughs> I love weights and I love yoga and walks. That's usually my wow. body. That's, yeah. that's what I read that was true for A's. And I'm an A and I, I, love, I love all those as well. Yeah. Hey, one more question. Uh, talking about the nervous system regulation, one thing that that I saw that changed my life when I finally started eating holistic is that my uh, circadian rhythm became normal. I used to have issues sleeping and mm -hmm. my mom's having that issue right now. And I keep trying to tell her, well, it's really what you eat, this and this. And it's really hard, harder for baby boomers, especially to catch on to this, to this idea that food will regulate your circadian rhythm and you'll be able to sleep better if you, if you eat well. Is this something also that you uh, see with your clients as far as like improving when they change their their eating and their holistic approach of basically changing their entire way of exploring with nutrition? Do you see this? Yeah. So um, tart cherry juice at night can be really helpful for your mom. If tart you wanna... cherry juice? She loves cherries too. Wow. There you go. Yeah. She can have that at night. Um, the Your melatonin in your body starts to decline as you get older, especially like in your mid thirties, like as you get older, it starts to decline. Um, and so that could be why, but with, with food, it's, that's very important. Is she eating enough food? Is she, you know, a lot of times, um, if you're eating like five o'clock at night and then you go to bed at 10 or 11, that's too big of a gap. Like have a, have a snack, yeah. have a snack that has like honey and a scoop of nut butter could be really, really nourishing because she could be having um, a blood sugar spike. Mm -hmm. Her cortisol levels could be activated. Something else that can be really helpful is as soon as you wake up in the morning, going out and getting sunlight just for 10 minutes. Like if the yeah. sun is out, 10 minutes can start to correct your circadian rhythm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and so that can be very help helpful because your cortisol and your melatonin have an inverse relationship. And so she, is she su super stressed? That's something else to consider. Sure. If you are listening to this, like, are you not sleeping? That's a direct um, reflection on you could be super stressed. Your cortisol hormones could be very high. Um, also, I look at like, what do your progesterone levels look like if you're not getting enough sleep because that helps you sleep better. And mm -hmm. so Tart cherry juice can be helpful to have as a night snack along with the honey and the scoop of nut butter, getting the sunlight first thing in the morning, making sure you're eating enough food throughout the day and not skipping like major, major food groups. Having, I mean, a lot of it, it, it it's also dependent on your mineral ratio and just what are you deficient in and things like that. But that can be a good place to start is making sure like the list I just gave, 
for doing that and then getting movement in. You know, are you moving throughout your day um, can be good too. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I think that's going to be very helpful for a lot of people. So you mentioned earlier in the beginning of this interview about your client not checking their labs. What do you look for in the labs? What specifically do you test for? Yeah, that's a great question. So I look at um, hormone testing, which is different than like your normal hormone testing. I do um, a panel that looks at the metabolite in the body. So it looks at your detox pathways, which is very important with estrogen detoxification. Mm -hmm. I look at the gut test to see what's going on with your gut microbiome. Are you digesting your food? What's your bacteria ratio? All of that stuff is very important for overall health and just even like your neurological health, skin health, all of that is dependent on your gut health. Um, I do another test called an HTMA test, which looks at your minerals ratio and heavy metals. Oh, wow. Um, and then like your blood tests, looking at your vitamin D levels, looking at your cholesterol, things like that. Um, magnesium. Mm-hmm, magnesium, copper, things like that. So those are the main tests that I run. Um, there's other functional medicine tests that I can run, but those are usually my go-to. So yeah, looking at, that's, that's giving us like a root cause of what is the body deficient in, what's going on with the whole body. And going back to that person that didn't want to, they just, they're not doing the test yet. They're, they're not making the They're not ready is what I'm feeling. They're really not ready. And so, um, and it totally makes sense now that your, your whole firm, being a firm believer that one size does not fit all is because everybody's health is different. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important to get these labs done and see what's coming up because you're not going to just out of nowhere, create a plan for someone if you don't know what's causing it. In the That's what's right. the root causes, you said it, it totally makes sense. And also, an interesting thing that you you mentioned was eating a lot of root vegetables. That's what you started to do in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I thought when you said that was, wow, it's interesting because you need a firm root chakra in order for all of your chakras to be aligned. And if you eating rooted vegetables are going to ground you, so that it all is it all aligns perfectly. That's beautiful. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing. And I, and, I yeah. I I believe that like eating for your chakras, like that's why you should have variety. You know, you should have blues, you should have greens, you should have yellows, you should have reds. And so I think that's, there's a connection there too. Wow. I never saw it that way. That's right. Because root is red and then you've got your sacral orange. You can have orange. (laughs) Wow. Mm -hmm. You got your yellow, you get the sun, you can get squash, all kind of, wow, wow, Mm -hmm. wow. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> bananas and and yellow bell peppers there's a lot blueberries which are really high in antioxidants right isn't that like the darker the berry the better correct yes yes so That's important interesting. <laughs> megan i have a question for you um it might be a loaded question but maybe not if you can go back to the time when you were struggling back in your early 20s or in your teens knowing what you know now if you could take a time machine right now what would you tell yourself Mm, that's a great question. What would I tell myself? Um, you are enough. Trust yourself. And go within. I love that. And I have to write it down. You are enough. Trust yourself and go within. Yeah. And you are. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. So what is the name of your business? How can our viewers or watchers and our listeners find you if they need a holistic health counselor or I'm sorry, you you call yourself a. You can just say practitioner coach. There's, there's a lot of different names. I'm actually kind of doing a rebrand right now. So uh, my website currently is forgivingbelly.com, www.forgivingbelly.com. That name was created when I was going through a hard time in my life. And I found that forgiveness was the medicine and how that was connected to our gut health and our stress and everything. And so um, that's how that name came about. But that's how you can currently find me on, that's my website. You can email me at Megan, M-E-G-A-N, at forgivingbelly.com. And then um, I'm on Instagram. I'm not super active on Instagram anymore mainly because I am really protecting my energy and focusing on the things that really ground me and make me feel balanced and aligned. And 
not really into into the game of I need to I need to show up on a social media platform. <laughs> that's, that's just me being transparent. I noticed that it was becoming too stressful, and I'm I'm a big believer in practicing what I preach. And if something's not fun anymore, then I I pause, I take a step back, and I um, reassess. And so right now I'm not on it as much, but you can also find me there. You'll learn you'll learn a ton about me and like reading my posts and things like that um, from from the past. Yeah, awesome. and that I am Megan Warren. You can find me there on Instagram. Megan Warren, everybody, www.forgivingbelly.com. You can email her at megan at forgivingbelly.com. I love that. I forgive my belly. Belly, I forgive you. There you and go. because of that, let's uplift everybody, uplift humanity. That's what we're here to do. I'm really blessed to have met you, Megan. I wish you an incredible new year. Keep doing what you're doing. You're motivating the world. You're improving people's lives. And in turn, you're improving your own well-being by doing that. I mean, it's a, definitely a green light for everybody. And yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. Go for the gold and you're going to keep rising to the top. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. Thanks so much for being on a little less fear podcast. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to a little less fear podcast. You know, I keep going because of all of you, all of the viewers, the supporters, the listeners, the followers, the subscribers, the feedback, the comments that I get. I'm just really grateful to be where I'm at and to be able to bring all these people here on this platform to motivate the world. It motivates me to keep going. It motivates me. It lights me up to keep going and going and going. And because of that, my website's also going strong. I've created an incredible resource page for all kinds of people. Anybody needing support of any kind, please check out my website at www.alittlelessfear.com. And I've also launched freelance poetry for businesses, for marketing, for people needing people that um, need something creative. Uh, check it out. Check it out. It's fun. There's video poetry. It's visual poetry. And uh, if you have any other questions for me, you can also email me at littlelessfear at gmail.com. Thank you so much, everybody. I love you all. And just a million thanks. Have you heard the old saying, you must love yourself before you can love anyone else? People often share that saying as the ultimate friendship and relationship advice, but they don't provide any guidance on how to love yourself. And it leaves us feeling either defensive, like it was only our fault that our friendships and relationships failed, or it leaves us with more questions and answers. How do I love myself? What are the steps? Where do I get started? That's why I wanna invite you to a three-day virtual conference, Love Yourself First, how to develop supportive friendships and meaningful relationships. The conference takes place February 10th through February 12th, 2023. And at this virtual conference, you'll learn the secrets to loving yourself so that you can create lasting connections that will enrich your life. Tickets are now on sale. If you use my promo code, Less Fear Special, L-E-S-S-F-E-A-R-S-P-E-C-I-A-L, on or before Friday, December 16th, 2022, you'll receive exclusive access to special hidden tickets. And these tickets are only available with my promo code. If you buy your tickets after December 16th, use the promo code LESSFEAR20, L-E-S-S-F-E-A-R-2-0. You'll receive a 20% discount. 20% is good, but it's not as amazing as the special hidden ticket prices. So get your tickets sooner rather than later. Also, because we know you'll want to share the love with a friend, if you buy two tickets in a single transaction, you'll also receive a 50% discount on the second ticket. If your friendships and relationships are missing the joy, affection, and the genuine conversation that you deeply desire, then you need to get your tickets for the three-day Love Yourself First Conference for February 2023. Reserve your space by going to https forward slash forward slash always love yourself first dot eventbrite dot com and don't forget to use the promo code less fear special once again get your tickets at https forward slash forward slash always love yourself first dot eventbrite dot com and use promo code less fear special before december 16th to get your special promo tickets i will be speaking on the topic of affection and I can't wait because I love affection and it, this is going to change your life. I really look forward to meeting all of you and to being of support. Thank you so much.